Today we're going to be covering a project that you can add to your resume. Whether you're into cloud and DevOps, AI and machine learning, or tech consulting, this is going to be one that I'd recommend adding to your portfolio. The reason I like this project so much is because employers are going to see the benefit of this project right away. That's because one of the problems with ChatGBT, Claude, DeepSeek is that at the moment when you query something, it doesn't query your own data. Those LLMs are extremely powerful, but as soon as you ask them a question on your own files, they don't have no clue what to do. And either they hallucinate or they just make something up, which is completely wrong. So today what we're going to be doing is fixing that issue and creating our own chatbot that is going to be powered by RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. And I know that showcasing your skills are honestly a massive part of this project. So I'll show you a way to automatically generate documentation that looks really good that you can add to your own portfolio and that you can post on LinkedIn really easily so that a lot of recruiters, your friends are going to see what you're doing and how you're keeping up with the latest trend. All right, let's get started with this project. I'm going to be using this website called learn.nextwork.org just here. I'll put the link in the description. This will contain the entire project guide step by step. Step one of this project, we're going to set up a knowledge base. And what that is, is basically I'd think of a knowledge base as your chatbot's personal library. So it's where we're going to be storing all of our documents, all of our information so that our chatbot knows where to source the answers. So what we're going to do first is actually go to AWS and we're going to sign into the console as our IAM user, not our root user. Now next, what we're gonna do is go up to the top here where we can choose our regions and we're gonna make sure that we've selected Ohio, which is US East 2. The reason we're doing this is because US East 2 has access to all of the AI data centers that we need to run all of the services for this project. Cool. Next, what we're gonna do is head up to the search bar and type in Amazon Bedrock. This is kind of like an AI marketplace where you can get access to all these different AI models. But there's a lot of features in here and it's actually how we're going to implement RAG and also create our knowledge base. So now speaking of knowledge bases, let's go to the left hand side here and click knowledge bases. A knowledge base is basically a personal collection of stored documents. So we're going to click create and then we're going to click knowledge base with vector store. Now a vector based search is actually something really important. I'm going to cover this quickly. So think about when you search for a movie on Netflix. If you search up action movie on Netflix, it's not gonna return no results. It's actually gonna search for the meaning behind your search. So when you search up action movie on Netflix, it'll come up with a range of action movies, not just a movie called action movie. So now you'll see a knowledge base name and knowledge base description. What I'm gonna do is actually go to that project I showed you and copy in the name here, which is Nextwork RAG documentation and then copy in a description. So this is a knowledge base which stores all of the documentation at next work. Nice, so we're gonna leave our IAM missions the same and we're gonna leave choose data source as Amazon S3. This is where we're gonna store all of the files needed for our knowledge base. Now we'll just scroll to the bottom and then we'll hit next. Cool, and here you've got a data source name. So obviously this is a bit of a weird name. So we're gonna go back to the project and I'm just gonna copy in this name here. So it's a bit easier for us to recognize what it is. Now you're gonna to need to connect an S3 URI in here. Now obviously we don't have an S3 bucket set up. So what we're gonna do is actually duplicate this window and then go to S3. All right, so what we're gonna do is go up to the top here, type in S3. Cool, now once we're in here, you're not gonna have any S3 buckets most likely, but this is a S3 bucket that I added from a previous project. Just before you create your bucket, make sure that you're in the same region as US East 2, because we need our S3 bucket to be in the same region as our knowledge base. Now that we're in the same region, I'm just gonna click create bucket. Now we're gonna leave general purpose bucket name. We're gonna go back to the project here. We're gonna copy in this name here. Now it says your initials here. So my initials are MS. We're gonna leave ACLs disabled, block all public access. We're gonna leave everything else as defaults. If you want more instructions as to why we left stuff as defaults, look in the project. It's gonna give you step-by-step -step guidance. Now we're gonna create our bucket here. Awesome, so, so that should be created pretty fast. We're actually not gonna go back to Bedrock yet. We're gonna upload our files in our S3 bucket here. These are the files that are gonna be used in our knowledge base. When we ask a question of our chatbot, it'll know where to reference the information from. What we're gonna do is go back to the project here and I'd, and I'd recommend downloading these files so you have a good example. We're gonna download this zip file here and just wait for it to download. Cool, once it's downloaded, you're gonna go and unzip this file. Make sure it's unzipped. Then we're going to head back to our bucket. We're going to hit upload. And what we're going to do is make sure that we add all of the files as files individually. So we're going to go into our project here and just select all of these files. Awesome. Now we're going to select all of these and then hit upload. 
All right, so it's gonna take some time to upload, so let's just wait a bit. All right, now once this is complete, we can actually move on to part three, which is finishing our knowledge base setup. Cool, so now we can go back to our bedrock tab here and go to browse S3. Now maybe your S3 bucket didn't show up here. If it hasn't, just hit refresh. And if that still doesn't work, then I'd recommend refreshing your entire page, but then you're gonna have to redo just putting in your data source names again. Browse S3 again, and we're gonna select network, rag, bedrock, and then your initials. So we can just hit choose. Now we're gonna leave the passing strategy as default, same with the chunking, and we're just gonna hit next. Now we have to select an embedding model. Now a simple way to think about embedding models is essentially taking text and converting it into numbers. So each time someone asks you a question on your chatbot, it's gonna create a special card. And this card is gonna be a list of numbers that is gonna categorize your question into the theme, the actual question, maybe the writing style. What it's gonna do is allow our model to look at similar cards of information so that chatbot can find information that relates to the question being asked, even if it doesn't contain the exact keywords, kind of like with that vector store search that we were talking about earlier. So right here, we're gonna go select model, and then we're gonna hit Titan text embeddings V2 and hit apply. We're gonna keep this as default and we're gonna move on to next. Now here in the project guide, it has a really useful part here. Just make sure that your knowledge base name is Nextwork Rag Documentation. Your data source is S3 Bucket, Nextwork Rag Bedrock, Embeddings, Titan Text Embeddings V2, Vector Store, that you've created a new Vector Store with Open Search Serverless. All right, awesome. Go back to your Bedrock here. If that is the case, then you can just hit create. Now, it may take some time for your knowledge base to actually generate. So let's move on to the next step. And that is step four of getting access to the different AI models. The reason that we're using AI models is so that it can take our text and put it into a human generated form. Otherwise, otherwise our chatbot would just respond with chunks from our documents, which always isn't gonna give us the best answer. So let's go ahead and try and set this up. So within your bedrock tab here, I want you to scroll down on the left-hand side and go to model access and open this as a new tab. Cool, now open up your new tab. And here's what we were talking about at the start. There is a ton of different models here. You can see Claude 3.7 Sonnet, which just dropped. All of the Claude models, Llama, so the meta models. There is a lot of models in here to play around with. So what we're gonna do is click Modify Model Access. We're gonna choose these models here. So I've already actually enabled Titan Text Embeddings V2, but we're also gonna choose Llama 3.370B and then Llama 3.18B Instruct. And then we're just gonna hit Next. Cool, I've already done this, so it says no modifications were made, but it should look something like this. If you have those models on screen, then you can just go ahead and hit Submit. Now, obviously models do cost money, and here is a summary of all the models here, but this whole project will cost you less than one cent to run. In this case, we've actually built our knowledge base, we've created an S3 bucket, we've also enabled AI models, but now what we need to do is sync up our S3 bucket with our knowledge base. So now what we're gonna do is actually go to our Amazon Bedrock tab that we still have open, and it should be generated by now. Either on the right-hand side or if your window's a bit smaller, it'll say it at the bottom here, just click Select Model. Now in our case, we just wanna click Meta here, and then we wanna click this 3.18B Instruct model, and just hit Apply. Awesome, so now you can actually see our model in here, but you'll notice that you can't actually type anything in this box here. And that is because we haven't synced our S3 files with our knowledge base yet. So basically we don't have any information for our chatbot to use. So what we're gonna do here is actually go to data sources here. Now data sources, now I'll just make this a bit bigger so you can see, but once you click data sources, you'll find that your S3 bucket is in here. You wanna just select it and then hit sync. All right, it could take a couple minutes, so just chill for a bit. All right, for me, it's all synced up, so we're just gonna move on to step six, which is actually chatting with your chatbot. So now we can open up this window here, and now let's try it, type in hello. All right, let's see what it says. Ooh, I like that icon, by the way, it looks so nice. Nice, it came up with an answer here, which is exactly what we want. Now, this is one of the smaller models for Llama 3.1, so we can actually change this out to the 70 billion version and hit apply. So if you ran to an error where you typed in hello and it didn't work, then you can actually just go ahead and change this and it should work. So now let's type in hello and it says hello. I'm ready to help, what's your question? Nice. So now let's go back to our project guide and just ask this question around what is next work? So obviously all our files are around next work. So let's see what it says. All right, that is awesome. So it shows us exactly what next work is and then it also cites the source that it got it from. Now let's try something slightly interesting. Let's ask a question that is not related to the data that we gave it. So let's try something like, what is your 
favorite flavor of tea. So here you can see it says, sorry, I am unable to assist you with this request. And the reason it can't process this request is that it's only trained on your data, remember? So there's nothing about tea in our data set, so it's not gonna be able to answer that. So, so let's actually try something else as well. I'm gonna toggle off this button here, generate responses, and let's try ask a question. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask this question, what AWS services has the student worked on? Now it's gonna list word for word exactly the services that the student worked on as it says in the documents. So you, so you toggling off generate responses basically means that the AI is gonna output exactly word for word what it says in your documents rather than having a human element of speech in its answers. Now let's turn it back on and then make sure we select model again, Lava 3.370B, and then let's ask the same question. Now you'll find that the answer is much shorter because there's actually only a few services that the student worked on and it doesn't give you all the exact word for word context that it would if it generate responses was off. Now this is obviously really cool. You can think about how it can be used in your company or your own documents that you wanna query. It's actually very, very useful. Now this is really simple. I've kept it very basic, but there's a lot more that you can do this with this project. There's actually a full secret mission that you can do with this project to make it more advanced. And as I said, this is part one of four. So there's a lot more things that you can do. And then at the end of your project, click this view documentation button and then download your documentation. Now you can save it to a portfolio. You can add it as a PDF. I'm gonna generate it as a PDF. I'm gonna choose light mode and save my documentation. And then I can actually share this post onto LinkedIn, X, Facebook, Instagram. I'm just gonna share it onto LinkedIn so you, I, you can get a bit of an idea as to what it looks like. So I click that share to LinkedIn button and it automatically writes my post for me. And now all I'm gonna do is just cancel out of here make sure that I actually tag next work so that we get a shout out. And then I'm gonna go to this plus button here, click on add a document, and I'm gonna choose the document that I just uh, downloaded, which is my documentation. And then I'm gonna hit done. And now I'm just gonna post this so that you can see so that when this is posted, your documentation as you go through the project and fill in the prompts is gonna look something like this, which is super professional and something that you can share on LinkedIn, share to recruiters, uh, and it's something that I definitely recommend as you wanna be sharing your work. But before you go, we need to do one thing. Now, in order to keep this free, you need to delete your resources after you've done the project. So what we're gonna do is delete our knowledge base, delete our S3 bucket, and delete our vector store in OpenSearch. So let's go back to the project here and I'll show you how to do it. So first thing we're gonna do is go to our knowledge base here and we're gonna go check our knowledge base and then hit delete. I was gonna ask you to type in delete here. Let's just make sure we do that. Nice, so it's deleting. Now, while that's happening, let's actually go to our S3 bucket here. So once we're in S3, let's go to buckets and let's click on that next work rag bedrock and then your initials, hit delete. It's gonna ask you to empty the bucket. So let's empty the bucket and we're gonna have to type out permanently delete and then hit empty. So now our bucket's gone. And then lastly, we need to delete our vector store from open search. So what you're gonna do is go to open search, Amazon open search service. You're gonna click into there. Once it's loaded, go to collections. Now then select your collection here and delete it. And again, it's gonna ask you to type confirm and then hit delete. Awesome, just make sure that everything has been truly deleted. And that wraps up the project. It's honestly such a fun one. I really like it. Let me know in the comments what you wanna see next. This is actually part one of four for this particular project series. So let me know if you wanna see the next parts. Boy, things are gonna get a little bit more tricky, but we got this. Make sure to like, subscribe, all of that. It really helps our channel. And join us next time to learn something new.